So the, the white ones are now what we, you know, um, wrongly just give one blanket name, yeah? Yes. Um, but that's a Malt uh, Maltese. The Maltese has a bigger face. Um, the face is broader mm -hmm. and the, the fur is curled, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, the spits are different. <laughs> they, they, are, they have, s s their snouts are short and sharp, yeah? mm -hmm. So, but generally people just have one name for them. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, that uh, he came to us as, um, about a year back. I think he's about two and a, my estimate is that he's um, two and a half years. Yes. Um, but ha she's um, she's two years. She's just getting to two years. Um, she, because she came to us as a puppy, so we have her her record. So Lily is um, is female. That's male. Somehow we've not been able to have them mate, but. Um, He's able to mate because he's mated yes. some of the other dogs. In fact, he's mated a full adult dog. I'll show you the puppies and the outcome. Um, and um, generally, people think they are not. Uh, these dogs are not aggressive. They are aggressive. Um, they, their bites may not be very strong, yes. but um, they, they they do bite. And the other thing is about these dogs, their hearing is very sharp. So when you are the roadside driving in they will start barking. They, have, they pick up distinct um, uh, sounds of the car or of the motorbike. And when the, you are coming home, they will alert the people at home you are there. Mm. So at times you think uh, the workers are working very well. But what they've done is that they've noticed under certain aggression with the dogs and um, you know, some happiness and excitement. Mm. So that the excitement is what tells them tells the workers you, somebody's coming. Mm. So whether it's um, you or it is somebody else, yes. you find the worker very alert. You know that it's the dogs that sold you out. So they, they are, they are very, they are, they hear, their hearing is very good and they, because they get excited easily. Mm. I guess it's their size or just their makeup. Mm. They, they, they respond to noises, familiar noises and, and voices. And again, uh, dogs, you know, dogs generally just um, identify you with scent. Yes. So if, they, if you're on the wind side and you, if the scent comes to them, they will start barking. Yes, yes. They can tell you're walking. Mm. So by the time you get to the gate, they already know. Mm. Even while we were keeping them before in Nairobi, if, when I was driving home, I would see my kids peep through the window because they can tell the excitement that Lily has. Someone somebody is. they know is coming or the car is coming. Mm. So whether it's me or my wife driving in, they will know. Mm. So, um, and they're aggressive. They're very defensive. They will easily get beaten by the big dogs mm. because they keep, they try and keep their territory. So because of keeping the territory, it's easy for them to be seen as aggressive yes. by the other dogs. So... Um, but that's one of their weaknesses. They're, but they generally, they are dogs like oh, 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 like every other dog. They need the extra care because of their fur. Yes. Like you see what I was telling you, mm. the guy didn't wasn't washing them well. Yes. Um, but they, they, you know, they need extra care because you should you know, shampoo them, comb them, um, you know, mm. bathing like once in a week. Okay. Don't go more than two weeks. Mm. Um, they they generally need. Um, 
and they like being petted. Mm. You know, that yes, petting, yes. that being taken care of, mm. they'll want to insist on being carried. Um, they, both of them really love driving in the car. Oh, okay. Every time you want to yes, go, they'll be, they'll be at the door mm. waiting yes. to be told, let's go. So... And this one, you have said this one is two years old. Yes, two years. When do they start giving birth? At what age? Generally, dogs would start giving birth, would start spotting at about six to eight months. Yes. But uh, you, they, are, they are still puppies. Mm. So most, um, it's generally advised, mm. let them stay until two, two years. Okay. Yeah, so you don't, or at least don't let them st start mating mm. before one and a half years. Mm. But they are still small. They need to enjoy their, you know, running around. Yes. Um, they need to get, um, build up their body. Mm. If you, it's just like human beings. If you have a child giving birth, at 13 years, a girl can give birth, 14. But you see, she's still a child. Yes. So you, I mean, it's not good for her, mm. uh, you know, for her health yes, yes. and her, you know, makeup to, to be able to, to start mating. And so all dogs, by the way, generally, all the guys who are also, who are breeders who have interacted with, Basically, the rule is two years. Let them let them get to do you know grow well, get enough strength. Um, again, when she's young and she starts giving birth, they shouldn't have enough milk. The litter will become very thin. The litter becomes thin. They become small. They you know they don't have enough body mass. So basically, two years is the agreed um, t uh, period. Let's say you are because I have a small boy. You are to sell any of them. How much would it would that one cost or this one? Um twenty thousand, twenty five thousand. Mm. Uh, and and more because I've kept them more like pets, eh? Yes. But bas basically um we sell them between depending with the size. When they are smaller, you well, you know, younger uh, you we will do Fifteen thousand to twenty thousand, mm. you know, when when they are slightly smaller. Okay. Again, uh, dogs, all pets, um, it's advised that you get them when they are smaller. Um, it is uh, advised so that then you grow with it. Mm. You know, you know what to, you know, you train it in the things you want it to be involved in. You know, its character. They get used to your home. They get used to your children or the you know family members. Yes. So I would advise that you take a, a, a puppy that is three months, five months. But like I said, Buddy came to us as an adult, and he's become part of the family. Mm. Um, we have another. We have. A, we also have another dog that has come to us as an adult. But generally, they, it doesn't. They will get. So, you, it just depends with how you socialize them. Mm. They will fit in. Yes. But again, because dogs don't um, live very many years. Again, you'd want to maximize on the years you stay with your dog. Eh? Mm. Dogs at eight years, ten years are beginning to really age, eh? mm. the health issues and all that. So basically, um, I would advise take a, young, a smaller puppy. If it's an, it's um, if you're taking a dog for security, then a bigger dog would be okay. Yeah, bigger dog. You just need to socialize, okay. and there are ways of doing it. Mm. Yeah. Then we can see the other breeds. So this one has four eyes. This is characteristic of uh, Rottweilers. Most of, uh, um, Rottweilers have um, tan, a uh, black and tan. Eh? Yes. Um, uh, then they look like yes, like they have four eyes or like they are wearing some makeup. Eh? Um, same body. You see a lot of body weight, um, muscle, um, short thoughts you know, very um, hefty heads, um, aggressive, um, easily provoked, very good for security. Yeah, so, but like I said, she's a, she's a cross between, the father is a Rotwell, but the Nini is a, is, is a Bobby, eh? okay. yeah. So it wasn't intentional again, uh, the guy who was bringing, who was meant to bring us the um, male for breeding, he brought a rotella in the, instead of a barbell. Eh? And the young guy who was taking care of them didn't think it was a, didn't tell the difference. So he just thought dogs are dogs. So he allowed them to. Need. But again, we also like what we got. Um, um, she, she's really good with. Um, she's friendly. She didn't unless really provoked or unless uh, you know you know charged uh, to charge at you, she will not charge at you. Yeah, and um, she's um, we've, she's um, she's oh, she's a, she's a, she's from the first litter, so she's just getting to about um, 
a year and um, about a year, eight months. Okay. Yeah. So because she, she was, she was, um, we got uh, we got her uh, the same year when when we got um, the the mother. Okay. The, 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 so she's about one 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 year or eight months. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of aggressiveness, this one Germany Shepherd and uh, uh, Rottweiler. Oh, I'd say I would say the Rottweilers and the Barbells. Um, for me, for my from my experience. Yes. Uh, the, the Rotwellers and the Barbells are very aggressive. And maybe also what makes them look, uh, is their look, eh? you know, this key short, big mouth, you know, big, big head, that make, could be what causes them to look aggressive. Um, I, but, I, like I say, even the local small dog in the village can be taught to be aggressive. You can teach, it's just training. It's training how you, 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 you involve them in the training, how you do it. Um, again, dogs aren't keen to get aggressive. Dogs aren't given a bangi to get aggressive. All that notion is nonsense. You are just abusing the dog. Um, and dogs don't really need caning. What, what, like, like children, positive motivation works better for them. Um, if, for example, you you're training them on fetching the bone, every time they run and bring you the bone, have treats. So you give them a treat. Um, when they go and come back, even if they run for the ball and come back without getting the ball, give them treats also. So that they know that when they run for the ball, every time they do this run and come back, the treats, there's something. So what you then do is then you keep doing, you keep, you keep at it and keep reminding them. And again, you, you don't train them once and then it's over. No, you do it over and over again. Like again, like all of us learning, you, you, you're taught something today, you have to remember um, to, you know, to do tomorrow, you have to practice again tomorrow, like driving or riding a bicycle. It's the more you do it, the better. So the, um, I would say the, the best way is just to keep at it. With positive motivation, don't, don't um, do negative motivation. Negative motivation is, um, uh, to me, in, in as far as training is concerned is like a teacher who canes a child because they didn't and it's not that they they wanted to not to they are in class to learn and maybe it's a, a subject they enjoy so if you if they miss out you know if they miss out on something remind them uh, if, if there's a child who is making more effort reward them more by either comments or, or you know a sweet or something so the uh, negative motivation where pets are concerned, you only make the dog afraid. So what the dog will be doing every time is that the dog will flip upside down. It, it's it's surrender. It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not fighting. So I think for me, we try and avoid cleaning. Um, we had a dog here that was eating the chicken. So what we did, we just grabbed the chicken, take a whip, whip the ground beside it. That enough. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to work it. Yes. You just need to smack the ground around it. You know, and scold it. And hold the chicken near it. So it knows the chicken is a no-go zone. So with that, then you, you'll be okay. okay. So we avoid caning. Um, I'm very strict with the guys who we employ for taking care of them because of the caning. Yeah? We do, we, it, it, cause you just make your dog a coward. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, how many do you have in the farm? We have... Um, Currently, we have 16 dogs, and that's because we have uh, some puppies that people have either booked or we are trying to get new homes. Eh? Um, we have two big, um, uh, we have one, two males that are watchdogs for us. We keep them outside. They stay in the compound, especially at night. We try and avoid them being out at night because of um, people coming in. You know, being a farm, guys come from even the backside. Eh? That, that, that for us is risky. Um, so we keep the dogs locked during the day or tied on chains. Then in the evening, we release them. Now, we have those two. Those are just security dogs. Then we have two big males. that are, One is a German Shepherd. That is um, the long coat. And we have one short coat. Now, those ones, we use them for, for, for breeding. Now, we have the, the two, we have the small, the two um, white ones. The Maltese, we, um, much as it's, uh, the girl is really um, a pet, we don't mind breeding. We don't mind breeding her because we have had requests um, from family and friends for the small white ones for because of the children. Now then we have the um, the we have the two the two the mothers, uh, the barbell and the rotella. Those ones now are for breeding. So our main um, 
we only we have about six of them that uh, uh, that we what we keep. But the others now, um, puppies, you know, once they litter, they, you know, you before they they like we have two of them, three of them have been booked. But the person taking them, two d different people, they are taking them um, uh, uh, up country. So they, they 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 can only go when they are off duty. So they are waiting to transport them. Then they are, we have we plan to keep Makere. I mean. It's not every day you're going to get that young. So unless we really get tempted, we plan to keep him, not for breeding or anything, but just as a pet. I mean, he came out well. Mm. We're really happy with, with him, mm. much as it was accidental. Yes. Um, what we, we are in discussion with, uh, with another farmer. We want to see if we can get a pure um, uh, Rotwella male and, and a barbell. Yes. That way then when we, we will improve our the, the outcome we have. Because the, the, the mothers are good. Um, we just we want, to see, we want to improve by having our own meals. Because what happens is like twice we've taken them to friends and you think there's been successful mating then you have no results. So, and it's because of the timing. You know, dogs have a span of about 21 days. In between the first days when from the starting to sport to the time you, the, the season is off. If you don't get it right, then you'd miss out. Then you have to wait another six months or so. Um, um, again, once she's given, if she gives birth, you don't want her giving birth again immediately the same So even if she goes, starts spotting, then you skip that so that she gains back her weight okay. and gains back her uh, health. Um, feeding, that time she, you, you feed her twice because she's, um, she's, uh, she's breastfeeding. You feed, and then the sooner you start with the feeding the puppies with extra milk, to help reduce the uh, the, uh, the pressure on the mother mm -hmm. as she grows up, okay. as, as as the puppies grow up, mm -hmm. so we 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 have um, we have the six of dogs, then the others. We have currently we have sixteen of them. <laughs>
um, and that's what we use um, for for both this farm and um, and another farm we have at Rironi. Now the um, basically, if you can get um, do 30, 40 percent, if you are doing feeds the, uh, the from from the shops, do 30, 40 percent of it as protein. If you can get bones, you can get meat. Um, you know, from butcheries, from uh, like the slaughterhouses, um, there's what will be um, generally like waste or what is not going to be used by human beings. So the, the, the butcheries are a good source. Um, again, do not feed them um, feed, uh, uh, bones from um, uh, the butchery. Like, you know, where you go eat bones, you eat meat, and then there's the bones, and you just give, feed them directly. No, we, we insist on boiling all of them, and that's our advice. Because um, human beings uh, may be resistant to, for, for example, you'll be surprised how much aflatoxin you can take, and the dogs are intolerant to. So we, we try and avoid um, feeding them direct. Even if it's me who has eaten them, we put them through the boil. Um, then we use the you know the soup to cook. Again, if you can get um, you know like chicken uh, heads, guys who keep um, broilers, we try and get um, broilers um, for you know the chicken heads, the, the feet, the internal organs that are not used. Then we also use again boil them. We avoid raw. I know there are people who've said there are quite a bit of benefits from uh, for from raw uh, feed uh, meat. We don't. We we will just prefer cooking for them. That way, they avoid. We, they won't eat the chicken. Mm. They won't eat. Um, they won't eat the goods on the farm. Um, so genu the the biggest challenge is just getting the right f quantities of feed and making sure that they are fed on time. The best thing with the feeding also feed them at a particular time. If it's evening at four or five, you give them time to run around. They will uh, potty outside. Then you don't have to clean their cages every time. Um, the other challenge we have with is with the vaccinations. Now, the first, uh, you know, you start off when they are puppies. You do two parvo vaccinations, and then you do a, a, a booster. Uh, the first one should be at six months, six weeks, and then the other one at twelve weeks, and again the other one at, um, uh, you know, after um, uh, at three months. What happens if you don't um, uh, vaccinate them against parvo? Pavo is spread by other dogs that come visiting, or even your shoes. So what will happen is that the um, the dog, the puppies will start diarrheaing and throwing up. So you you have to be careful with that. Those ones you can't miss. You that also wipes out a whole, well, liters. Eh? The other thing you need to do is now the other general like um, anti rabies. Again, because in case they bite somebody by mistake, or in case um, they come into contact with other dogs. If they are, if they are, if you, they have, they are not vaccinated, their chances of spreading rabies or picking rabies is very high, um, and it's a requirement, I think, even by law, to, for you to vaccinate the, your, your, the, for rabies, eh, to to end to reduce the spread of rabies, and rabies come from even wild animals, eh? so um, you need to be careful with that. Um, um, veterinary services are not cheap. You'd be surprised that just to vaccinate one, you know, one dose of Pavo, you'll pay between um, 1500 and 2000 3000 depending with the vet. So um, I guess the veterinary guys would not want to hear me say this. But I, again, if you know, if you learned how to do it and you knew how, you, you are sure that you've been trained properly without necessarily going through the vet school, uh, again, it, 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 you'd save on that. Yes, but it would be take a lot of experience and you need to be careful because it's easy to inject a dog and you give it a uh, cyst. So you'd rather let the professional do it uh, because he's trained and he knows. Again, it's good to have a vet come into your compound, look at your pup, uh, your dogs generally once in a while, just to pick up anything that they would be going, the challenges that would be, you would be going through. Um, challenges, you breed um, a dog, you, you know, you spend 6,000 shillings on bare minimum on vaccinations, uh, you've fed the mother, you've, you know, dewormed, and deworm is done in a recommended three months. We prefer doing it two months. So having seen the amazing work that you're doing here, um, and the kind of farming, the different one from the, the common one that we know, maize, potatoes, other doing sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. you're doing that unique kind of farming. Is it something you can advise the young people to go into? And whether does it have 
money does it pay because that is now the the key thing one and if everything we do you do it for the the joy of you uh, because it's something you enjoy um when when it comes to animals eh, it's not just about money it's about the love for animals if you think of that you are going to wake up in the morning and think about a dog it doesn't have you, you can't you okay it's generally not you don't use them and you are for for you know for farming it's not like goat or chicken or or cows um it they, they, um it's uh, waste would look like you know that eh? but you 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 still have to clean you still have to take care of them you have to watch them themselves yourself so now the the challenge then would be if you are just doing it for the money will you get enough money to do it but yes on the other hand you go go, go into a, a business you go into any farming you expect results and the results are uh, the reward of the enjoying the you know your relationship with them with the dogs and dogs you know the the difference between dogs and um, and cows is that animal dogs are called man's best friends eh? is because there is a way, the way you communicate there is a way you get engaged you, you get engaged with them and you there is a way you you just have that you know relationship with them um, and it's that's why it's there are times a guy will say give me a hundred thousand I'll give you a hundred thousand for this dog and you're saying which is not for sale. I mean, who sells a you know a, a, a friend? Eh? But every business should make economic sense. I would advise anyone trying to start a dog farming to start off with first learning as much as they can about dogs. Dogs are like I would say the way a doctor will go to school and learn <coughs> about um, you know treating you and diseases and making you well. So that you don't go into an industry because everybody else is going into it. Two, I would expect, I would, I would advise that start off with um good pure breed. The challenge with uh, crossing with crossbreeds is people don't want crossbreeds. People want a, a pure breed, and um, the pure breed. Uh, the good thing about pure breeds is that you'll have a market for them. When it comes to economics, there's, there's um, you'll make, uh, you, you'll be able to sell the puppies. Um, st you start off from a place of loving the dogs, learning as much as you can, get a pure, uh, a, a, you know, a pure breed. And remember when you get a puppy at, say, four months, five months, six months, remember it will take you another two years before you start breeding her. Um, if you start off with big dogs, then you need to really go to, um, to a well-known um, pond or guys who have shelters or guys who have... T uh, are taking care of um, who who are doing dog farming because um, you need to know a good to have a good history so that you know this dog is this this is what this dog has been through this is what um, I need to do with uh, him or her and you know you you take care of uh, have so that you're able to take care of that dog mm -hmm. and also so that then you know um, when you to breed her. When to start, even if, if even the male, when do you start, you want to start using him for breeding mm -hmm. so that then you don't start too early and you hamper its uh, growth and you don't start, um, again, you don't want to start mating a dog at five, four, five years. Uh, I mean, you can, nothing will stop you from doing it, but my advice would be let it be at least two, two years and above. So if you're going to be that patient, you need uh, to put money into it. Uh, it's not easy. Um, take, I mean, remember you have to hire somebody when you have um, you're keeping chicken before they, you, you, you can you'll, you'll have manure from them if you're keeping a goat's baby by the time you start selling them for slaughter or you know for, for, for breeding elsewhere it gives you manure so there's something it's giving you dogs will only give you companionship and security hard to measure hard to measure in terms of you know um, resource but again uh, you can imagine if they, when you have a dog outside, and they are wild animals or they are, you know, they are they are intruders, the dog will have barked. It will alert you. If you do not have a, 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 that as a backup or you know like, or an alarm system, then you can imagine the guys will be on you before you. Yeah. So so dogs you cannot measure that. 
So dogs are companions, um, and I guess that's why for me, I feel it's like a relationship the way I relate with other human beings. So thank you very much. That is uh, today's interview, and we are very happy to have you here today. And that was that. Asante Nisana.